She want to help too. Yeah. Bad. We don't need your help, Leah. No. First John 5 and 20. Make it 19. And we know that we are of God and the whole world lie in wickedness. This just go right back to what I was telling y'all earlier before we started. If you know, if you saying you of God and you know the whole world lie in wickedness, you really got to have better wisdom. Really got to have better wisdom than when you're dealing with these people. And we know that the Son of God has come and have given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true. Even in his son, Yahshua HaMashiach, this is the true God and eternal life. I want you to come over here to Matthew chapter 10 since I mentioned it. You got to have a whole lot better sense dealing with these people. Matthew chapter 10 verse 16. Listen to what he said. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Now, like I say, give you the instance now. Let's just say you get into it with a sinner for whatever reason, something come up. Do you think it would be wise for you to sit there and argue with them? Because you, cause you know, ain't nothing stopping that nigga just to say, you know what? If that nigga flinch wrong, I'm going to hit him with a 3 P, And you just blinked your eye and that was the excuse he needed. Bop, bop. Because sometimes niggas just want to hit you and they just trying to come up with a reason in their mind why they should go ahead and steal off. You know what I'm saying? That nigga flinched wrong and you just lifted up your hand to get something out your eye. That's my reason. Bop. Now, you, now, you, now you leaking. And see, some of y'all carnal, so you're going to want to get up and fight. But just imagine if you done told all these people in here you a Jew. Just imagine if you done did that. Now they sitting back and they... Now listen to... What's going on, bro? Now sit back and listen to it now. Now sit back and think about it now. You done told these people you a Jew, right? You done told these people you live without seeing all this stuff right here, right? Nigga done hit you in your mouth. Now they sit back looking at you, looking to see what you finna do. You know what I'm saying? Now they sit back looking at you, what you finna do. Because if you sit there and take it, they gonna be like, you know what? They might be serving God. But if you get up, oh, ho, oh, nigga, bleep, 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 bleep. And then you go to square off. Everything that nigga talking about full of crap. Y'all don't think about stuff like that, do I want y'all to come on. Hold on. Hold it, Matthew chapter 10. Give me Ephesians chapter 5. I done told y'all this before in a different area. I'm going to tell it to you again. Y'all really better start thinking before you do stuff. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. See, I'm going to show y'all the difference. And a lot of y'all, truth be told, and after this, get this here, I'm going to come on around here. to We're going to go to Matthew chapter 7. After Matthew chapter 7, we'll work our way to Leviticus 19 at the Lord from there. We'll see how it work out. We'll see if that's what I want. Verse 11, make it 10. Matter of fact, back me up to about verse 6. I'll take it 5. We'll work our way down. I want to make sure y'all hear this real, real good. Matter of fact, let's make it three. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not once be named amongst you as become saints. If any of y'all saying you want to be, any of y'all know what the word saint means? See, you paying attention. Anybody know? Huh? Mm -mm. Sanctified one. So if any of y'all seeking to become a sanctified one in y'all, all that fornicating, you ain't married, keep your penis in your pants. You ain't married, keep your leg closed. Nobody got no business going in your vagina. And 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 I know some of y'all been taught this here. You're not married because you put your penis in that woman. You don't talk about, I don't care what, none of these stupid niggas done told you. We done went through this before with some of y'all, so y'all know. You are indeed people land. It's not against the law not to be married. But you can't come in captivity and then tell them people you're going to do what you want to do and they land. That's not how God set it up. I wouldn't play with my soul. If you want to get, if you want to marry the woman, the man told you render under Caesar what is Caesar. I don't know how much it costs in the states that some of y'all in, but in the state of Florida, it's ninety-eight dollars. Take them white folks, they ninety-eight dollars, and go about your business. Y'all know where the marriage certificate, y'all know where a marriage license come from. You know where they get that from? They get it from us. They get it from us. Where you, any y'all, do y'all know what y'all got to do with a marriage license? You got to sign it, the woman got to sign it, and it's got to be the sign in the sight of two or three witnesses. What's the only grace of people on the world got anything to do with two or three witnesses? 
So you know that's so niggas so dumb, cause cause you know it's Israelites that teach you don't need no marriage license. Niggas so dumb, you rejecting your own stuff. They got it from you, dumb nigga. That just I'm just I'm mentioning that for some of y'all who didn't know. Somebody gotta put their phone on mute. I hear all your turn. Uh Some of y'all don't, I know some of y'all ain't, ain't, ain't never know that or heard that. You know what I'm talking about? But y'all had to sit back and know that. That's just like the people, they bankruptcy law. Like these people know a little bit of our stuff. They don't know everything, but they know a little bit. Now, when these people told you this country was based off, uh, uh, is a Christian nation, you know, they were lying in, in essence because they wasn't following it. But in actuality, a lot of the stuff they did is based off this book. It's based off this book. You know what I'm saying? It's based off this book. Everything. Come on, man. Don't y'all know in, in almost all 50 states in America, it's still illegal for you to, be, to sodomize somebody? Don't you know it's still illegal in most states for you to be putting your mouth on a, a woman's vagina and her mouth on your penis? Do you not know it's illegal in almost every state in America to be shacked up with somebody, to live with somebody you ain't married to them? Nigga, that's still the law of the land right here in the state of Florida right now. You know what I'm talking about? So these people know this stuff wrong. And then you come talking about you claiming righteousness and you serve the living God. And you're going to sit back and say, man, you don't need no piece of paper to be married. Nigga, you's a fool. I'm going to ask y'all a question. So you're going to write a bill of enforcement. Huh? Right in there, yeah, that's a, I know I'm getting to that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm gonna ask y'all a question. When y'all married Israel, did he make a covenant with Israel or, or not? And when he made a covenant with Israel, didn't he leave it in writing? Didn't he put it in the Ark of the Covenant, which would be the ark, the thing that held my marriage covenant I made with my wife? Now, how you gonna be stupid enough talking about you gonna marry a woman you don't need no documentation? So guess what that means? Somebody going to hell. These stupid niggas will tell you you don't need no paperwork to marry a woman, but you but you gonna write a bill of divorce to get rid of her. Get out my feet, you ain't nothing but a hypocrite. Y'all had to sit back and look at that type of stuff. And these the same niggas you niggas see, these niggas have locks long as the day is long, these niggas have fringes on, big old borders of blue, gonna bust hell wide open. I be wanting y'all to be focused on this. I done told you, man, I ain't got no problem. I love all my people, but I don't fool with everybody, though. Just because a nigga know he an Israelite means absolutely nothing to me. Sometimes y'all have to sit back and look at that. Y'all just get excited. He know that you niggas will see a nigga post a video and swear that nigga don't know, know some truth. Ain't never seen this nigga for a day in your life. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he got a Hebrew name. Stop it. Now, some of our brothers and sisters know Ray and Chelsea can bear with it. They had Hebrew names until we showed them you ain't got no business having one. I mean, you can give yourself another name, but you ain't got no business putting Israel in your name. That's not your name. Brothers, who, who, who is Israel? Who name that is? Huh? Jacob and the Lord. Adam had that name. Jacob had that name too. Who else? Adam and Jacob had it. Who else had it? Noah didn't have it all the way. He did make Noah a god though. But, but who else had it? There you go. The Messiah had it. Now I'm going to ask y'all a question. How many times y'all ever read this book, anybody with the name Israel on them, other than the men that were just mentioned? So, so, why is niggas, so why is niggas out here teaching niggas they need to put that in their name? And don't you know if you say you don't you know if you say your name Israel and you ain't got the Ruach Hakodesh, you a liar. Mm -hmm. See, ain't nobody tell us that type of stuff. Cause Israel mean power to rule is God. What's the power of God? Hold on, I'll show you. Hold this, hold this Ephesians chapter. Matter of fact, let me work my way down to it. After I read this Ephesians chapter 5, I want you to come around there to Luke chapter 24. And after we read Luke chapter 24, we'll come around and look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Y'all bear with me. He said now, but fornication and all uncleanliness or, or covetous, let it not once be named amongst you as become saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, 
nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater have any inheritance in the kingdom of the Messiah and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Because of these things come the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. We're reading this here. Don't let nobody lie to you that you think you're going to get in God's kingdom and you can sin all you want. He said vain words meaning worthless. You know, if they worthless, that go back to Jeremiah chapter 7. Hold what you got. I'll show you in Jeremiah chapter 7. We come right back to Ephesians chapter 5. We still hold in Matthew chapter 10. And Lord will, I'm going to get to what we had to look at tonight. But I need to show y'all something. Because y'all don't need to be dumb no more. Jeremiah 7. Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 4. Make it 3. Matter of fact, make it 2. Let's see what he told Jeremiah to do in Jeremiah 7 2. Stand in the gate of Yah's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of Yah, all ye of Judah, that enter in at these gates to worship Yah. Thus saith Yah of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of Yah, the temple of Yah, the temple of Yah are these. So this man just sat back and told you, don't let nobody, don't trust in no lies now. Talking about the house of y'all, the house of y'all. You know, I keep seeing this all the time. Stupid niggas be talking about, God don't dwell in temples made with hands. You don't need to have no building. You know that's the dumbest thing that you, anybody could ever say out their mouth. Do any of you brother know why that would be the dumbest thing anybody could say out their mouth? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, any of you brothers know what it means when he say he don't dwell in temples made with hands. I need to make sure that y'all know what that means. But I understand that. But I'm asking y'all a question. Because if y'all don't know what that means, that means I'm going to have to show you. And I already got an inkling. I'm going to have to show you. You know what I'm saying? So y'all just bear with me. He said the temple of y'all need, right? If you thoroughly amend your ways and you're doing right. Listen to what he said. For if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if you will thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor... If you oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt, then I will cause you to dwell in this place, and in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Listen to what he say. Will you steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense under Baal, and walk after other gods whom you know not, and come stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. Mm. Mm -mm. Now we have to look at Sukkot Sunday. And the reason why I mention this today, remember how we just read Wednesday about that synagogue of Satan and niggas love to scream that that's them white Jews, ain't them? But don't you know, nigga, if you commit sin, you are the synagogue of Satan. Only because Hebrews love to point at Christians and say, y'all say, y'all because Jesus came and died for your sin, you can, you can live any way you want to. But Hebrew niggas teach it too, just in a different way. They teach it too, just in a different way. You know what their number one excuse is? See, the Messiah going to work all that out when he get back. See, see the Lord, the Lord going to straighten all that out. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, he going to straighten something out all right. You ever told him, you ever seen a child? Or you got any of y'all got children old enough? He'd be like, they say, oh, I'm going to straighten it out when we get to the house. And ain't no, oh, correcting you. Oh, no, my son. This is what you're supposed to do. Go in the room and get that belt, nigga. Say, I don't like this belt. You know what belt to get. Don't come back out here with that brown one. I want the black one. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all old enough to know when you were something to go get the switch. And some of you niggas were slick enough to try to bring the littlest twig you could get. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? Don't take them, plan them together. See, some of y'all ain't uh, old enough to know about that. But I'm going to sit back, I'm going to show you the temple of y'all. Isaiah 66 and 1. Jews always had a synagogue. Man, you can read in the book of Psalms, I think the 74th division of Psalms in the 8th verse, he said they done burnt up our synagogue. You ain't never seen no Jew just standing around just, no, we just, oh, we just the church. We the body. Nigga got to be dumb. You read all in the New Testament. He said, I went everywhere where the Jews resort, didn't I? In the temple, in the synagogue. You seen Paul going in the schools disputing. You seen him going to the synagogue. Anybody tell you, oh, we the church is an idiot. You know what I'm talking about? Because when it's actually saying church, it's actually meaning synagogue. It's actually meaning his body. That's what it means when he say he don't dwell in temples made with hands. No, he never dwelt in that temple Solomon built. He wanted to dwell in the people. Niggas, that's stupid. 
Isaiah 66 and 1. Thus saith Yah, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things have my hand made and all those things have been, saith Yah. But to this man will I look, even to him that is of a poor and of contrite spirit and tremble at my word. You heard what he said? All the things you could take to make this house, I made them right. Now I want you to look at 2 Chronicles chapter 6, I think about verse 38. We still hold Ephesians chapter 5 and Matthew chapter 10. Maybe we get back to Matthew chapter 10. Maybe we won't. Lord knows. Lord going to work it out. We got to deal with some things we were talking about to tie right on in. We just getting started. But we're going to get to it about forgiveness, about y'all how the Lord forgave you, about how y'all need to learn how to deal with each other and forgive each other, even people who ain't in the Word. Make sure that's the verse I wanted. Let me see. That ain't 38. 38 ain't what I wanted. Let me see if it's over here. Second Chronicle chapter 6. Stop. Make sure that's the verse I want. I know what it said, but I got to remember where it's at. Mm, Y'all all right? No, I hear somebody like somebody like this. Here, man, I have to go off on somebody. Say, don't go off on them, man. Don't hurt nobody. At least don't hurt them till the sun go down tomorrow. You can hurt them all you want then. I don't care what you do then. Don't hurt them tonight. That made me think. That made me think about that dude in St. Louis got killed on the Sabbath. And they say you ain't got no business getting killed on the Sabbath. I'm trying to remember. I know it's in Second Chronicles. But you know what Solomon prayed? Solomon prayed. He said, "Will thou, will thou dwell on earth?" He said, "The heavens can't contain thee. The heavens of heavens can't contain thee." I'm trying to remember where it's at. You know what I'm saying? Say they can't hold you. Make sure I find the person I want. I don't know that stuff. Yeah, I do. I look right at it too. Second Chronicles six and eighteen. That's the work part. Look right at it too. He say, "But will God in very deed dwell with men on earth?" Behold, heaven and the heavens of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house which I have built. He asked the question, will God indeed dwell on earth with man? Do y'all believe that God indeed dwell on earth with man? Y'all believe that? Well, let's look at Isaiah chapter 7 here. Let's look at Isaiah. And after we look at Isaiah chapter 7, we'll look at Leviticus 26. We're going to work it all the way in the law and the prophets before we turn around and look at the New Testament now. Isaiah 7, verse uh, 11 or 10. Moreover, y'all spake again to Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of Yah thy God. Ask it either in depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt Yah. And he said, Here he now, O house of David, it is a small thing for you to weary men, but will you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And what does Emmanuel mean? Well, let's look at Matthew. Well, let's look at Matthew. Well, let's look at Matthew chapter 2 and let's just see what it says. Because you got a lot of Hebrews say that ain't talking about the Messiah. Niggas so dumb. Second Chronicle chapter 6, Solomon just asked the question, will God indeed dwell with men? So you know what also that tell you? I'm going to show you this here too. This also show you the Ruach HaKodesh wasn't given before the Lord came. I'm going to show you that now. Y'all follow me now. Matthew chapter 2. Or Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Y'all just follow me now. Matthew 1 and 21. Y'all all right? Y'all follow me. I think that bell going off, it's a lot. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all let me know. I know I know it ain't gonna be the same. I know it ain't gonna be but the same three people say something. Everybody else ain't gonna say nothing. I know this, I know, I know, I know Denzel and Delta gonna say something. I can't. He said, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahshua. And he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Now Solomon just asked the question. 
Now Solomon just asked the question, will you indeed dwell with men? Isaiah 66 said, where's the place of my rest? Where am I going to be at? He said, it ain't going to be in no house made with no hands now. Because he said, I made all that stuff. Now let's look at Leviticus chapter 26, about verse, uh, what did it, about 18? Let me see it's eight, verse 18, what I want. No, we just having service, man. We just rolling. It, it ain't, it, you know what I'm saying? We, Leviticus 26. Leviticus 20. This is Leviticus 26 and about verse 9. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I how this thing go, man, it goes, whatever he give me, that's what I'm going to preach. I ain't got nothing written down. We ain't got nothing planned out. I might have a framework of something in my mind, but the Lord direct all things. Verse 9 of Leviticus, the 26th chapter. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. And you shall eat old store and bring forth the old because of the new. Now I got to ask you brothers a question. What you think that means? He said you will bring forth, you'll eat old store, but you're going to bring forth the old because of the new. What do you brothers think that means? I promise you this going I promise you this going to tie into what we talking about whether you know it or not. What y'all think that's talking about? This is a serious question because y'all need to know this. Well, let's look and see what it is. Absolutely. But I'm going to show you how it is. Hold on. Hold what you got. Hold Leviticus 26. Matthew chapter 13 about verse 47. We don't get to this other stuff. And, and, and other stuff I got, Lord permit, I'm going to get it. But we're going to start off this here. I got time. It's the Sabbath. I ain't got to send you home early like I do on Wednesday. I ain't got to send you home. I keep y'all not at home. I said. Matthew 13 and 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast in the sea and gathered of every kind. And when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Yahshua said unto them, have you understood all these things? They said unto him, yea, Lord. Then he saith unto them, therefore, every scribe which is instructed into the kingdom of heaven. Leah, go put it up. Go put it up. Go on, take it back. Hold on. Take that back in there. Take it back. Then he said unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed into the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder which bring forth out of his treasure things new and old. What did the Lord just tell y'all when he said that? That every scribe, if you a scribe, what would that make you, gentlemen? What are you if you're a scribe? Not a prophet. You're not a prophet. You're a teacher. You would be a teacher. You, you would know the book. So if you're instructed in the kingdom of heaven, what are you instructed in? Absolutely. You, you, absolutely. You instructed in the plan of salvation. So when he tells you he brings forth things out of his treasure, things new and old, that means you're going to have to bring out the new stuff because of the old then don't. Like you read in the law. That means, so you know what that's telling you is? You know what that's telling you? If a man who teaching you the word can't show it out you out the new and the old, then guess what that means? He, he, serves no, he serves no purpose. So guess what? So what precept does go with that every Hebrew in America know? That they love to spit to every Christian they come from. That's where, where you think the Lord got it from. But you see where it was told to you in the law, though? He said you would have to bring forth the new because of the old. You know what else that go back to? Hold what you got. I'll show you what it go to. John chapter 2 by verse 1. I'll show you another place what it go to. I'm going to show you where else it go to in John chapter 2 verse 1. I'm going to show you another place what it go to. And then it's going to go to what the brother mentioned about the covenant. He said you'll eat old store and bring forth the old because of the new, right? John chapter 2 verse 1. I'm going to see who else remember this off of memory. We ain't going to go back and look at it. I'm going to see who remember. On the third day, and the third day was a marriage in Cana of the Lee, and the mother of Yahshua was there. And both Yahshua was calling his disciples to the marriage, and when they wanted wine, the mother of Yahshua said unto them, they have no wine. 
Yahshua said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. I'm going to ask y'all a question. Why did this man say that to his mama? When she said, they ain't got no wine. And his response was, Woman, my hour ain't came yet. What I got to do with you? Why would he say that, dog? Why would he say that, dog? I'm talking about sit and think, sit and th sit and think about it for you answer. Why would he, when she said they don't have any wine, why would he say to her, "Woman, my hour is not yet come"? Think about it. Hold oh, what you got. Proverbs chapter thirty-one. Proverbs 31 and 1. We still holding. Leviticus chapter 26. Ephesians chapter 5. Matthew chapter 10. I don't think we holding nothing. Proverbs 31. Make it verse 4. Proverbs 31 and 4. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Hold on, listen to what he said. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Now what y'all think that would mean? Slow down, y'all. Slow down. One at a time, y'all. Slow down. What y'all think that mean? I'm telling y'all right now, this ain't no license to go drink. Ain't now one of you niggas got no business sipping no wine, sipping no liquor, because I'm asking y'all a question. Any of y'all know what the Lord deemed to be drunk? Does anybody know the most high y'all who dwell in the, in the heaven? Do anybody know what he considers to be drunk? Does anybody know his legal, legal limit? So if you... So if you don't know, why would you risk it? And ain't even no drinking, we supping. That's a sip. I'm saying this to be, I'm saying this because, I'm saying this because I know there's an Israelite congregation in America right now that throw parties and they BYOB, bring your own bottle. I seen these dudes sit back and talk about getting drunk. I seen dudes talking about a strong drink. You have to sit back and realize, son, you can say I'm not drunk, but the Lord in heaven look at you, that nigga drunk as a skunk. If you, if you don't know what he deemed to be drunk, why would you change? Because you got to remember, this is your soul. So you mean to tell me a little sip of yak is more important than your soul? A little sip of wine is more important than your soul. Then what you had to look at, you can do whatever you want to do. I'm talking about, I want, I want to make this clear to every last one of y'all. You can do whatever it is you want to do. But just know you're going to have to answer for it. And if you're going to answer for it, is you willing to stand up and take that? Is you going to be willing to take the consequence that come with that action, whether it be positive or whether it be negative? Is you going to be willing to take that responsibility? But no, but see, but the thing is, is nobody telling people or warn people about these type of things. So they'll think that it's not that big of a deal. But he said, give wine to those that are ready to perish. This woman just came, his mama just came to him and said they ain't got no wine. And his first response to her was, woman, it ain't my time. He would tell him, it ain't time for me to die yet. Come on back over here, just right over here to Luke chapter 22. Flip over here to Luke chapter 22, verse 18, since we already by Luke. Ain't no need to travel. Make it 17. Luke 22 and 7. That's why he was telling her, woman, it ain't my time. Y'all didn't even catch that to wonder why he would tell this woman. His mama come. His, his mama come tell him. They ain't got no wine. So y'all don't remember this. Remember we dealt with this on Passover in Proverbs chapter 9. When he said drink your wine with joy and eat your bread with a merry heart. See when you keep on Passover and you supping that wine and you eating that bread. You supposed to do this with joy. This was your deliverance. That was your deliverance. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Y'all didn't sit back and look at it. It tell you that there. In, in Judges chapter 9, he said, The tree says, Should I leave my wine? Was please was cheer up God and man. That wasn't about no literal wine. Only drunk niggas gonna see that's about wine. 
Only a nigga who want to drink gonna see wine. I'm just being honest though. If you want to drink, that's what you gonna see. You know what I'm saying? Just like you gonna want to see, you can divorce your wife and remarry and get another woman, even though when you read the book, that ain't what you see. All you gonna see is Moses said you can put her away. They not gonna see where y'all put his wife away and didn't marry another one. What are you talking about? He stayed. He he came up with a, a a way and a means to take his wife back. The same way if somebody want multiple wives, they're going to go in that book and they're going to look at something any way they can look at it to justify that. They're going to look at what Jacob had for wives. I'm going to show you how dumb niggas here. Niggas say Jacob had four wives. He didn't have four wives. He had two. Them handmaids were not his wives. His wives were Rachel and Leah. He didn't have four wives. He had two. You look at, see, I'm going to tell you something, man, before we move forward. I'm going to show you how niggas is not the seed of Abraham. How many wives did Adam have? How many wives did Abraham have? One. And when Sarah, no, he had one. And when, when Sarah died, that's when he remarried. What? And that's in the law. Because the law said, the Lord said this, the Lord said that itself. You can't marry them while they still live, right? And then Paul came back around and said the same thing. You won't be called an adulteress if your husband is dead. You see Abraham do the same thing. So if you're the seed of Abraham, how are you doing anything different? I know why, because you're not the seed of Abraham. Because that means they ain't been born of the son. Because that's what Paul was talking about, but that's a whole nother thing. 22 and 17. Because you got to remember, Israel means power to rule is God. So just because you of Jacob's seed don't mean you are the Messiah's seed. That's what y'all got to sit back and realize. Ain't no, that's what Paul kept talking about, about not glorying in the fact you Israel. That serves you no purpose if you disobedient and unbelieving. As I told you before, you want to be Jews with scriptures, not a nigga with a Bible. It's a whole bunch of niggas with Bibles. It's a whole bunch of niggas with Bibles. You know what I'm talking about? You know full well our people ain't never used the term Bible. You know what I'm talking about? They ain't never say that. I've got my Bible. They say, I got the book of y'all. I got the book of the law. I got the scriptures. That's what they said. We, we, just, we, just, used, we just used that term Bible because it means books. I know there's a Greek God called Biblios, which is the God of books. You know what I'm talking about? But that's what you use it because of habit. But when we know when we actually open this book up, you never read nowhere where them people said Bible. Just like you don't never read nowhere where a Jew went to a church. You know what I'm saying? This stuff that niggas don't know. I had a nigga get mad at me. We don't have service. We have class. You stupid nigga, when you come to Sabbath, you serving God. That means you're coming for service. You an idiot. You know what I'm talking about? Calling yourself because you don't want to be deemed Christian, but you live like one. 22 and 17. Book of Luke. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this, divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. I'm going to ask y'all a question. I'm going to see who know the law good. Why did this man tell them he wouldn't drink wine no more? Why did he tell them that? I'm going to see who know the law. And that wasn't because he was a Nazarite. He, he turned because he just sipped the wine, didn't he? Before he gave them that cup, he sipped it. All of them sipped out that cup. Everybody did. You no, know, the reason why he turned down the wine and for him being a Nazarite and going along with Nehemiah when he was up there on that tree and they tried to give him that sour wine, he said, no. We actually went over that not too long ago, remember? In the book of Amos, or was that, let me take the book of Amos, when they say they, they, they gave the Nazarite wine. See, he had to drink wine. I know he was a Nazarite. He had to drink wine. Remember when we looked in Deuteronomy and they say our son is a wine bibber and a glut. And what did they say about the Lord? He said, y'all say I'm a Leah. Calm it down. And what did they say about the Lord? He was a wine bibber and a glutton, right? Y'all didn't even know that law in De Deuteronomy. He had to fulfill that too. 
There was reasons why that man was sipping wine. He wasn't sipping wine because he wanted to sip. There were things in the book that had to be fulfilled. But why did this man say, I will not drink this wine until I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom? Why did he say that? It's in the law. What office does the Lord hold? He holds many offices, but what, what office does he hold? What office you think I'm talking about? High priest. High priest. And what the high priest can't do when he enter into the inner sanctuary? Can't drink no can't drink no wine. And when he went into the code, when he went into the heavens, where was he going back to? To the code as tabernacle to make intercession for you, right? That's why he said that. See, we have to know that. You have to know why you think he just said that. Oh, I ain't sipping no more. There was a reason why he said that. If you don't know the law and you don't and you don't have a trained scribe instructed in the kingdom of heaven, he can't tell you why he said that. You just sitting there looking at it. He just said he ain't sipping no more. Verse 20 though, live what he say. Likewise, also the cup after supper, supping, this cup is, is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrayed me is with me on the table, and truly the Son of Man go as it was determined. Lord, will y'all keep that in your mind? We could be able to touch that. Truly the Son of Man go as it was determined. But woe unto the man by whom he is betrayed. Now, when you sit back, and let's drop down about verse 41, because it said to give the wine to him that's ready to perish, right? Him that's of a heavy heart. You know the Lord was of a heavy heart, right? Verse 4, for, verse 3, uh, what are they, 43? Matter of fact, make it 41. And he was withdrawn from them by the stones cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it was great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Does anybody remember why he was sweating? Who remember? Because we looked at this too. I'm just quizzing you. Not just the furnace of affliction. I'm taking another knife. We know that one now. What's another place? I'm going to tell you this here. I'm going to narrow it down. In Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, with the curses. Why did this man sweat? Who remembers? I done showed it to you before. I'm going to see who remember though. No, that ain't why he's sweating. You know what one of the curses was? He said, I hit you with a fever. You know what happened when you got a fever? Yeah. With a burning and a fever. Don't y'all, when y'all have a fever, don't you be sweating? Mmm. 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 Don't y'all think when he's sitting here praying for that cup to pass, don't you sit back and look at that? This man sitting back looking at, hey man, I'm of a heavy heart. I'm ready to perish. I'm ready to die. That's what we said get a cup to. That's what we said get a cup to. So when his mama came and said they ain't got no wine, he was telling them, mama, mama, it ain't time for me to die yet. I'm just popping off. Come on back to John chapter 2. Ain't that something? And you, and you got these old, man, what's the word? I'm, I'm going to have to use a Duval County word, so y'all bear with me. I know Troy going to know, and any other brothers he got on here who from here, that's an old hook boogie nigga going to sit back and say that old white man. You know what I'm talking about? Old New Testament was written by some white folk. That's the only type of nigga say that, though. Or like this nigga I knew from out east, that nigga say them nigga with that bow rickle, man. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Nigga I knew named Tiny Tim from out east, that used to be a line, that nigga with that bow rickle. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? It's a lot of people who believe. It. I know they don't know the law. I had a grown man tell me, uh, would tell uh, Brother Trav, he said, man, the Lord cast off demons off me. He cast off my unclean spirit. He said, hey, where can you read in the book where an man cast off an unclean spirit without an intercessor? He said, I ain't never read it. But you just said he did it, but you ain't never read it. Pick him up. Yeah. It's a lot of people say stuff, man. They don't even know what they be talking about. They just be talking. No, a lot of times what it is is because people actually don't know what the word say. Also, keep in mind that we still don't deal with how God came to dwell with men. I ain't forgot about it. We still hold in Leviticus chapter 26, and we still hold in Ephesians chapter 5, and we still hold in Matthew chapter 10. 
John chapter 2, verse 4. Yahshua said unto her, Woman, what have I do with, do, to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three first skins apiece. And Yahshua said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. I'm going to ask y'all a question. Where is it at in the law to justify why how he turned water into wine? We're not going to read it. I've told some of y'all this before. This ain't new information for none of our, our members. But who remembers why he had to turn this water into wine? Anybody remember why? Moses. Where at in Moses though? When he turned the rivers into blood. You know that's Exodus chapter 7. Because you know he told him to go get stone pots in Exodus 7 too. But guess what? These stupid Hebrew niggas don't know that. He said he had to be a prophet like under Moses. I'm talking about the stupid Hebrew niggas that say the Messiah ain't real. Now, how the Gentiles knew that? Because they ain't preaching that. And ain't Hebrews ain't teaching it. I only know one man that know it. I don't know nobody else. Why they not telling us that? That make a lot of sense now. You see why he turned water into wine. You think he just did that just to do it? That's what he told Let's look at verse 10 now. And he saith unto every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when have well drunk that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 6. Second. Cor 2 Corinthians 3 and 6. Who have also made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kill, but the Spirit give life. But the ministration of death written and engraving in stone were glorious. So that means the first thing was good. The first wine was good then. So that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even with that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelled. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remain is glorious. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. Anybody who know been around me, we keep it real plain. It's real plain. Ain't no hidden, you know what I'm saying? It's real plain. This man just sat back and told you, if the first covenant was glorious, if the first wine was good, you know the wine behind it got to be better. He said the administration of righteousness. Now there was something that when he said the administration of righteousness that was not a part of that first covenant. And that was eternal life by the gift of the Ruach HaKodesh. They did not have that. God did not continually dwell with men. Come back to Leviticus chapter 26. He didn't do that. After we read Leviticus 26, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16. That's why he asked that question. Will God indeed dwell with men? Will he dwell with us? Verse 11. Listen to what he said now in verse 11. I will set my tabernacle amongst you, and my soul should not abhor you. And I will walk among you and will be your God, and you shall be my people. And I am Yah your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that you should not be their bondman. Listen to what he said. I've broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. You know what the word upright mean, right? Y'all know what that word means? You know what it means? It means blameless. It means blameless. And you know what that means if you're blameless, right? 
No sin. This man said, I will set my house. I will set my house amongst you. He said, he said, I'm the one who brought you out of sin and broke the yoke of sin off of you to make you perfect. That's what he just told you. You know the son of God came to do that right. Hold on. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 1 before we get that. Remember what we read in Isaiah 66? He said that he, he don't dwell in temples made with hands. Ain't that what he said? Ain't that what he said? Hebrews 8 and 1. Don't let these people around here tell you this stuff, man. These lot of people out here stupid. Extra stupid. Extra stupid. You know what I'm saying? I got, man, like I said, man, I got so much stuff in my mind I want to show you. I don't even know if I'm going to get to everything. I've been trying to show y'all this. I'm talking about, no, I'm talking about, I've been trying to show y'all Ezekiel chapter 24 a month. We ain't even working around it. <laughs> He said, now the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heavens. Listen to what he said. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. So that means that's a house that wasn't made with hands. And he said he looked unto the man who, uh, who is of a humble and contrite spirit. He said, to him will I look to. Who else did he look to? He looked to the son. You heard what he said? He said he pitched a tabernacle made, not made with hands, but with the Lord made. What the Father made. Because who made that tabernacle of him? We already went through this. Remember we went through this a couple weeks back at Exodus 25? How the house was him? Y'all remember that? And, and then guess what? Lord permitting, sooner rather than later, if he will, we're going to look at Ezekiel chapter 40 through 48 and see all that talking about the house and all that stuff is him. You got stupid Hebrews out here right now waiting talking about they're going to build another temple. Not a third temple for an Antichrist, but a third temple for us. The third temple already been made, dummy. It's already been made. What you looking for it for? Nigga got to be just the just the most stupid, retarded people you ever came across in your life and had a nerve to call somebody unlearned. That's the part killed me. Have the gall, the audacity. You know what I'm saying? That's when you want to sit back and you look at wanted to do like them white folks be on them old TV shows. Well, I never. That's what you want to sit back and look at them. I never. You know what I'm talking about? He said, keep on that attitude in you and you know. <laughs> hey, but you see this here? Now, this is the tabernacle which he pitched, right? So when we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6 by verse 16, that means, and it's just going to rehash what's written in the law. Because it's right where Paul got it from. Paul got this 2 Corinthians 6 and 16 straight from Leviticus 26. He quoted it word for word. He ain't deviate or nothing. 2 Corinthians 6 and 16, And what agreement have the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith Yah, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith Yah Almighty. So, so now we know from John chapter 15, that man said, abide in me and I in you and you'll bring forth much fruit. So he said, dwell in my house so I can dwell in your house. See, see, when you look in the book of Job in about the 11th chapter, I think about the 17th, maybe 18th, 19th verse somewhere in there. Job sat back and tell you, if iniquity be found in your tabernacle, cast it out. Now you know full well, that man ain't talking about if you got sin in your actual house. He was talking about in you. Because see, God can't dwell in an unclean place. You know everybody loved to quote Paul when Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 that whoever defiled the temple of God, God will destroy. And y'all don't sit back and realize when we looked at the temple of God in, in, in Jeremiah chapter 7, he said, this is the temple of y'all. Stop sinning. Execute judgment. Don't commit adultery. Don't commit sin. But you say we delivered to commit sin in this house. Galatians chapter 2, verse 6, 16. 
We were just talking about that Wednesday. I guess we'll look at it again. After we look at that, I got to look at Ephesians chapter 4 then. And then I guess we'll work our way back to Ephesians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 2 verse 16. I didn't want y'all to sit back and look at it. So you mean to tell me the Son of God came. Remember how we just read. I didn't read the first John chapter 2, but I guess we're going to read it tonight. Remember how we read on Wednesday in Judges chapter 9 where the king Amalek cut down the tree and put it on his shoulder and then told everybody to do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? And the Lord told you, take up your cross and follow me, which he was saying to do the same thing. Which Solomon already told us in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, as the king that came before, so are those that come after him. So that means you're going to have to stop sinning. That man ain't sitting back and say, man, that's say, no, nah, man. You ain't delivered to do all these abominations in my house. You're not going to dwell in my son and do all this nasty, freaky stuff you around here doing. You got no business blowing no booty. I was just tripping. I had to ask somebody, where did he, I asked my old lady, where did these niggas get this term? Where did this come from talking about eating booty like groceries? What type of nigga would talk about he put his mouth on somebody's booty and eat it like some groceries? You got no business putting your mouth on nobody rectum? Got no business putting your mouth on nobody's vagina. You ain't got no business asking your woman to put your penis in her mouth. That one she supposed to look at you. No, nigga. Don't do no stuff like that. I'm a Jew. Don't do no nasty junk like that. You better go find somebody else for that stuff, nigga. You know what I'm saying? It's just certain stuff. Because, see, I know a lot of Hebrews feel like this here. Oh, man, ain't no big deal. I want my old lady to wear thongs. Man, ain't no Jew got no business with no string in her booty. Ain't none of you niggas got no business wearing no thong drawers either. Who? Boy, you know some nasty niggas around here got, but, hey, boy, hey, guess what? You Y'all know it's niggas around here be wearing thong, underwear, and bikini draw. Grown man ain't got no, I'm be honest with you, grown man ain't got no business wearing no tidy whitey tree, in my opinion. Go on, get you some boxers, man. Boxer briefs or something. You be too old to be walking around here with some literal drawers on. <laughs> they say big grown nigga walk around here with some fruit of the loom. They say, boy, you better make, I'm talking about, and you better make, I'm talking about, woo, woo. Don't be one of the nasty niggas, boy, because you already know, boy, them niggas wear them drawers. They gonna see them do this thing, boy, I'm clowning. <laughs> nigga clowning. Say, big grown rusty nigga got uh, skid marks in his draw. Do you know what I'm talking about? Man, that nigga had me tripping. I heard one of them niggas say, uh, nigga told me that nigga Ply said he hold around here got coleslaw in their panties. I said, boy, this nigga nasty. <laughs> I said, well, this nigga's a fool. But guess what, though? Some of these women out here got all type of nasty discharge in their drawers. Nigga, I did this nasty and filthy. You Jews, man. Look here, man. We supposed to be clean inwardly and outwardly. You know what I'm talking about? That means, guess what that means? In the morning, brush your mouth. You know what I'm saying? I, I guarantee you, man. And some of you brothers who deal with them Hebrew niggas more than I do. But you know some of them niggas, after they get in the word, they feel like they ain't got the bathe, wash their clothes, brush their teeth. They don't feel like, man, them niggas use that, oh, you can't get a tape up. You can't round the corners of your head. Man, one time I get no edge, nigga, you better go see a barber, nigga. Nigga, you don't even look like your mama love you. You know what I'm talking about? Straight up. I don't even see how some of them niggas got wives looking like that, man. You know what I'm talking about, nigga? You look like a castaway, man. You look like, you look, you know what they look like? And this ain't a disparage. None of them brothers downtown. They look like one, they, no. Nah. No, they look like one of them niggas be hanging out by the city rescue mission or hanging out by Clara White trying to get a beer and a cigarette. Nigga ain't got to be out there on the street. Nigga just out there looking like that. Like, know what I'm talking about? It's a lot of people who out there on the street, they ain't even got to be out there. They choose to be out there. I ain't talking about people who out there because it's real out here. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about, man, I know some people out there, man. I done ran across these people ain't crazy. Some of them got homes to stay in. They just go out there and hang out with them all day, every day, smelling like death. You know what I'm saying? You can bathe. You can wash your clothes. You know what I'm saying? Man, I'm telling all you brother right now. Man, look here, man. Make sure you keep your beard trimmed. Don't be walking around here looking like no, uh, like you crazy. You know what I'm talking about? Make sure, man, your hair is cut. Keep a tape up on. Keep your clothes clean. I'm telling you, if you stink, I'm going to tell you. If your clothes stink, I'm going to tell you. If you need a haircut, I'm going to tell you. You know what I'm talking about? Straight up down. I'm gonna tell you. Nigga, you looking the thing is crazy is white this hill, man, because they, they 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 try to distance themselves from Sunday Christian. I don't care, like I said, I was just talking to Brother Troy about this here. I don't and y'all know this here, I'm gonna just tell this here, cause I know Brother Jerome, he rock them too. I don't wear Hebrew garments. Ain't mad at nobody who do. You know what I'm saying? If that's what you wanna wear, 
That's what you want to wear. But you wearing them because you have a desire that when you present yourself before God, whether it's for service or whether it's your everyday life, you want to look good. You want to look nice. You know what I'm talking about? These niggas don't be caring how they look. Man, I seen a nigga put a video up in the street, nigga, like you call that a set apart garment? Nigga, it look like a dusty rug. Nigga, it look like it's fleas in that rug. Roaches and all. You know what I'm saying? It look disgusting. I done seen some brothers with some garments, man. They real, real nice. You know what I'm saying? Nice looking stuff. Like I say, it ain't what I would wear. Because, hey, I like wearing what I wear. But at the same time, I can acknowledge a quality garment, though. I don't care who made it or what type of garment it is. I can acknowledge something. That's nice. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's nice. I don't care what a nigga be mad at me because I'm rock what I want. I don't care. I'm going to say where my garment's at. Nigga, I got him on, nigga. You see the polo? Is you mad? Yeah, I got my Cubs hat, nigga. Might have my Astros hat on. Might have my Jacksonville hat on. Might have my Jaguar or my Jacksonville Suns hat on. I could have my Red Sox hat on. Could. Who? Might have my A's hat on. Might have my Rockets hat. Tigers hat. What you mean? You know what I'm saying? I might put on suit. I might put my Ultimate Warrior shirt on, nigga. And what? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got Spider-Man on my shirt. And what? Yeah, I got a shirt with Macho Man on it. And what? I like Macho Man, nigga. Yeah, I got a shirt with Iron Man and the socks to match, nigga. And what? You know what I'm saying? That's what I like to wear. If I ain't going nowhere, I will put my workout clothes on and wear them and be cool with my slides on. And I'm good. You, you know what I'm saying? I live weights, nigga. Ain't got nothing to do with the inside. I live weights. So I'm going to dress like an athlete. Nigga got a problem with it? Meet me in the gym. I'll break you out of it. Glacier 2 and 16. I'm going to make my bed in the kid. I'm going to make my bed in the kid. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Yahshua HaMashiach, even we have believed in Yahshua HaMashiach, that we might be justified by the faith of the Messiah and not by the works of the law. For the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. That's that ministration of righteousness. Not that you ain't got to obey the law. Because you remember what he said? He said, I will set my tabernacle amongst you and will walk in you and will dwell in you because I broke the yoke. And I freed you from the bond, man, that you could walk upright. This ain't got nothing to do with it. He's not telling you not to keep the law. He never said not keep the law. He said the law would not justify you. We just talked about the witness. It's your faith in God that will justify you through your belief you will obey. That's why Paul told you in Romans 16 and 25, he said the righteous obedience of faith. You ain't going to follow what you don't. You ain't going to uh, obey something you don't believe. That don't make sense. You know what I'm saying? I would not do deadlifts if I didn't believe that it would make me stronger and bigger and, and, and have major benefits through my whole posterior chain. I would not do them if I didn't believe that. I would not put 300 some odd pounds on a bar and put it across my shoulder blades and squat repeatedly if I did not believe that there would be a hormone release of testosterone and growth hormone which would cause me to put on slabs of muscle from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. I would not go do that if I did not believe that information. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep it that simple on the natural level what we mean by righteous obedience of faith. When I started training, my homeboy told me this was in prison, 2007. He said, bro, squat. He said, when you squat, that release testosterone and you'll get bigger. We ain't had no weight, so we doing body weight squats. You know what I'm saying? He beat that in my head. Before I actually read anything in the magazine to back up his claim, I believed it. You know what I'm saying? I believe what he said is beneficial for me to do this. And then by product of me doing it, then I see information afterwards that backed him up. But I had to believe that the end result, you telling me, if I do these squats, I'll get bigger everywhere. For me to do them, I had to believe that was the result. I have to believe Yahshua is the son of God according to the scriptures. If I believe that, then guess what I would do? I wouldn't eat pork, I wouldn't break the Sabbath, I would keep his feast, I wouldn't hate my brother, I would love my neighbor, I wouldn't commit adultery, I wouldn't be a sissy, I wouldn't be a fornicator, 
I wouldn't covet. I wouldn't be an idolater. I wouldn't be stubborn. I wouldn't be rebellious. I would be Kodesh and set apart as he is. That's what I would do because I would believe what he said and the reward that he would give me for my belief and obedience to him. But if I don't believe that, then guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do what I want to do. That makes sense for y'all. Because I got to make, because sometimes we can, you see, see, some of these Hebrew niggas ain't got enough sense to know that. Some Christian pastors do it, and some of them good at it, some of them ain't. But you're supposed to be able to take something from the natural to be able to see it in the spirit. My sister, them, anybody know me, know. I can show you many parallels of the word right in that gym. You'll be amazed how they parallel one another. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about amazed. But that's one of the things. Anybody who, who trained, or if you get a trainer, it's even like I said, if you get a personal trainer, you actually trust in this person that what they're telling you to do, that there's going to be a benefit in the end and a result and a goal attained based off the regimen that they give you. Now, when you sit back and look at it, Yahshua is your personal trainer. He's sitting back showing you, I'm going to teach you and train you exactly what to do and how to do it in the exact form and the exact motion that you might be able to attain the goal, which is the Ruach HaKodesh. That's, my, that's his job. That's what he is. It's to teach you exactly what to do. See, like I said, it's like a deadlift. Like me and my brother-in-law was in T-Mobile. You do it like, because like when uh, Delta was like, don't do them deadlifts that buddy was doing on that video the brother tagged me in. He had horrible form. The form that he had, he blew his whole back out. You know what I'm saying? When you, when you do deadlifts, you're supposed to roll the bar to your shins. You really want your shins close to the bar as possible. Some people use one arm, one hand underhand, one hand overhand. I use both overhand myself. You know, you do what's comfortable for you. You're supposed to put your feet by shoulder width apart, and you're supposed to have your back in this natural arch, sitting down like you in a chair. And when you come up, you ain't supposed to use none of your quads. You're actually supposed to be lifting that with your hips. When you're coming up, you're supposed to be moving your hips, and you squeeze your glutes at the top of the movement. That way that you don't mess around, hurt your back, or do any of this stuff. Because the deadlift is a very technical move. It te Somebody got to show you specifically how to do it so you don't hurt yourself. You know what I'm talking about? And the Lord is sitting back showing you, I'm going to show you how to live clean. I'm going to show you how to live right. I'm going to show you exactly what to do and how to do it so you don't mess around and hurt yourself. Just how we were looking out last week. Once you come in that city of refuge and you come out, see, you don't hurt yourself because you didn't believe what I told you. See, I told you what to do. I trained you on what to do. You didn't believe me, did you? I got something for you, stupid nigga. That's how it happened. That's how it happened to you. Come on, though. Let's finish this up because we got to get to this forgiveness thing, Lord permit. He said, but if while we seek to be justified by the Messiah, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore the Messiah the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For though I am... For I, through the law, am dead to the law that I might live under God. So what you think he mean when he said that I, through the law, am dead to the law that I might live to God? What y'all think that means? Remember in John chapter 1 verse 10 it says, Yahshua is the law made flesh, right? Now we know if we die with the son, we live under God, right? So if he say he dead to the law, then he dead to the pronunciation that was given to Adam in Genesis chapter 3, right? So through the son, I'm dead to death. That's all that means. That's all that means. Through the son, I'm, why you say you can't live under God, but through the son. You know John chapter 11 verse 25 said, let's look at it. John 11 25. All we holding right now is Matthew chapter 10 and Ephesians chapter 5. We ain't holding nothing down. I think we got everything else. Eleven and twenty-five. John eleven and twenty-five. Let's listen to what he say now. Yahshua said unto her, "I am the resurrection and the life. He that believe in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live." Mm, does that not back up what that man just said? Now, who remembers in the prophets somebody that was dead and then they lived because they touched somebody, they died with him? Who remembers? What happened with that man that got through in the grave of Elisha the prophet? What happened to him? He touched his bones and he came alive. So through a man of God who was dead, he lived. 
You know what I'm talking about? Because he was dead. And then through him dying, he lived. So that's what we had to sit back and look at. In order for us to get life, we're going to have to perish. Because he said, though he were dead, yet he shall live. This is what he say. And whosoever live and believe in me shall never die. Believe thou this. So you already said, he not only did he say believe, but what's the other thing he said, gentlemen? What's the other thing he said? He said not do live. He said whoever believe and live. So that's going to show you, you got to have faith in the son as the scripture has said, and then you got to obey. Then you got to obey. That's what Paul was actually telling you here. Come back to Galatians chapter 2 and Galatians chapter 2. That's what he's telling you. I can't get the justification that I seek through just keeping the commandments. Because if that's the case, what would the purpose of this man even come? Why would he drink this wine to be ready to perish? Why would he do that? How would the new covenant, which is greater than glory, even be put in effect? How would he be able to dwell in us and us in him if he don't come? The whole purpose is us to be sealed with the spirit. That's what he came for. Now what happens? God walking you and you walk in him. That's how God dwell on earth. That's how he was Emmanuel. These niggas so stupid, they can't even realize that. Not only was he Emmanuel by being here in the flesh, but he further confirmed it again when he sunk the spirit down on Pentecost so he could literally dwell in us forever. That's why we do this each and every week. Why do you think we come sit down three times a week and do this? So y'all can hear me talk. That's the whole purpose of why we... Man, I'm be honest with y'all. How many of the Hebrew Israelites ever taught y'all what you needed to do to even get this man's spirit? How many of y'all were actually told what you had to do to get it? So if they didn't tell you what you had to do to get it, don't you know you was a dead man walking? Don't you know if you, I don't care how many commandments, how upright you thought somebody was, how many Sabbath days you spent with them, if they leave here without this man's spirit, they going to hell. They don't have life in them, which means they hadn't partook in the righteousness of y'all. That's scary right there. Ain't it? That's scary right there. Because you got dudes walking around here, so when you see a lot of Hebrew dudes and they see somebody pass, what they end up acting like? Just like Christians. Oh, I see you in the kingdom, brother. All that type of stuff. But you know that nigga didn't have what he needed to get life. Our whole purpose is to get the spirit. If you don't have it, you don't have life. In the story, if you believe this book. Because he said he breathed on them and said, receive the Ruach Kako death. That's how the men got life. You're supposed to know that from Adam, right? He breathed in him. Made him a living soul. The second Adam came and made a quickening spirit, meaning to make you alive. If you ain't received that spirit that made you alive, how you got eternal life, nigga? How you gonna get out the grave? It ain't gonna be like he tried real hard. No, nah, nigga, try hard at big wits, nigga. You got to get this right. Galatians 9, 2 and 20. I am crucified with the Messiah, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but the Messiah live in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then the Messiah is dead in vain. That righteousness is the belief. You always got to look back to your father Abraham. He believed you and he counted to him for righteousness. Abraham was not counted righteous because of a law. Paul sitting here telling you. I died with him, which went back to what we looked like with Amalek with that kicking that tree on his shoulder, one, and telling the people to take it with him, right? He said, "Man, I live my life for him." He said, "My belief in him." First John chapter two verse five. That what y'all gotta sit back and look at. Don't just sit back. You know the part that killed me in Hebrew niggas say it too. See, we gotta walk like Christ. So that means we gotta be perfect then. Ain't nobody perfect but Christ. But how you gonna tell me to walk like a perfect man, but I can't be perfect like him, but you telling me to be like him? What type of sense does that make? You telling me to emulate a man, and then when I say what well, that means, I can live without sin like he did. Oh, see, no, nah, brother, you can't do that. Then why would you tell then why would I wanna be like him then? 
The only type of reason why they want to be like the Lord, he coming back to kill all you Edomite. That's all they want to be in for. Don't, don't even sit back. At... No, but guess what, though? That why they so worried about them, worried about him coming to kill them. Guess who he really coming to kill? I'm coming to kill you, nigga. I expect them not to follow me. I expect them not to. That man told Paul told you in Romans chapter 2, if they live without the law, they're going to perish without it. If they, you know the law, say the man ain't gave them no word, so if they ain't got the word, they're going to die without it. So that's common sense. But you got it, stupid nigga. So I'll make sure I kill you first. 1 John 2 and, 1 John 2 and 5. He that say if I know him and keep not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keep his word in him truly is the love of God perfected. Hereby we know that we are in him. He that saith he abide in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. So if you say you dwell in the sun, the sun dwell in you, meaning God abides in you, meaning Emmanuel is with you. He said you ought to pick that tree on your shoulder like Amalek did and then do it. And you know this Amalek was a king too, didn't it? A king told you, take this on your shoulder and do like I did. The Hebrew nigga don't even know why that man say take up your cross and follow me. It's already in the book. It's in the book. It's in the book. He was just telling you what the scripture said. If you knew the scripture, you would have known why he said it. This man did all of this so your sins could be forgiven and so that he could dwell in you. Because this God's sole purpose. He desires a place to dwell. He never wanted to dwell. All that stuff showing you that actual physical temple that Solomon built had absolutely nothing to do with that building. Nothing. It was all his son. What was the only thing that was actually in the tabernacle other than the vessels was the Ark of the Covenant. It wasn't nothing really in there. You read about anything in there? It wasn't nothing major in there, was it? Only things in there, the only things that were in there, everything that was in that house was a testimony of his son from the breastplate, the Urim and Thurim, the, uh, you know what I'm saying, the manna, Aaron's bud, rod that budded, all these things, the shoe bread, all that stuff in the house, the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat, everything in there was his son. All that was him. That's all it was about. You know what I'm saying? That's all it was about. We get so fixated on these things, looking at these marvelous natural things and actually not actually seeing, going behind the veil. And seeing what he was trying to show us. But let me show y'all what I got to talk to y'all about tonight. I got about another hour to get this half end up to. Matthew chapter 5. I got some things in Job and Jeremiah. I won't get to them today. Y'all alright this evening? Y'all feel okay? Praise y'all for y'all sure then. I'm feeling alright. I can't speak for nobody else. I feel great. Sit back here. John, I mean Matthew chapter 5 and probably about verse 33. I'm looking at the Job 7, but I think I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. It ain't but so you can't digest but so much at one time. Matter of fact, back me down about verse 39, 38. John, Matthew 5 and 38. You have heard that it have been said an eye for an eye and a two for a two. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asked thee, and from him that borrowed thee, turn thee not away. You have heard that it have been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you, but I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he make his son to rise on the evil and on the good and send rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so. Be ye therefore perfect, 
even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. Do you know why this man told you to love your enemies and bless them that curse you? Do you know what we could go out in the scriptures and actually find somebody who did something like that? Now, ain't nobody, now nobody cursed Abraham. You know, the king of Sodom tried to run up on him, but you know he crashed all of them. 2 Samuel chapter 16. You all right? You moving around? He can say help is on the way. He get ready to come on up out of there. He say it's time. 16. 2 Samuel 16 and about verse 5. He can say he is ready to come on out of here. And make his appearance for the world. Second Samuel chapter 16, verse 5. And when King David came to Beharim, behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gerah. He came forth and cursed still as he came. He cast stones at David and at all the servants of King David. And all the people and all the mighty men was on his right hand and on his left. And thus said Shimei when he cursed and come out. When he cursed, come out, come out, thou bloody man, thou man of Belial. Y'all have returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose steed thou hast reigned, and y'all have delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom thy son, and behold, thou art taken to thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. Then said Abishai the son of Zariah unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. The king said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zariah? So let him curse, because Yah hath said unto him, Curse David. Who shall then say, Wherefore hast thou done so? David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son, which came forth of my bow, seek my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone, and let him curse. Yah have bidden it. Mm -hmm. Second Samuel, the 19th chapter. Now you just sat back and you seen this man say this man just came back and cursed me. And what did David do? He said, leave him alone. Let it ride. Let it ride. Let it ride. Let me make sure. I was just looking at this. I might have called the wrong track. No, I didn't. 19 and 20. I mean 19 and 17. 2 Samuel 19 and 17. He told him, let it, how many of y'all, that's the, that, that's the instance what I'm talking about with the issue that the sister had. It. Like the, the lady was talking trash, calling you name. Man, let her talk. That's what David did, ain't it? Let her talk. I don't care what you call me. You can say I'm stained. You can say I eat dog doo-doo. You know what I'm saying? I'll let you talk, man. Maybe you're talking to end up a blessing on my behalf. You know what I'm saying? Make it 16, pardon me. And Shimei, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, which was a Barim, hasted and came down with the men of Judah to meet David. And there were a thousand men of Benjamin with him, and Zibia, the servant of the house of Saul, and his 15 sons and his 20 servants with him. So they went over Jordan before the king. And there went over a ferry boat over to carry over the king's household and to do what he thought good. And Shimei, the son of Gera, fell down before the king as he was come over Jordan. And said unto the king, Let not my lord impute iniquity unto me, neither do thou remember that which thy servant did perversely the day that my lord the king went out of Jerusalem, that the king should take it to his heart. For thy servant doth know that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I am come the first this day of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet my lord the king. But Abishai the son of Zariah answered and said, Shall not Shemai be put to death for this? Because he cursed Yah's anointed. And David said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zariah? That you should you should this day be adversaries unto me. Shall there any man be put to death this day in Israel? For do I not know that I am this day king over Israel? Therefore king said unto Shimei, Thou shalt not die. And the king swear unto him. So instead of cursing his enemy, he blessed him then, didn't he? So what do you think that means? He said, Love your enemies. You know who else somebody else was the enemy of David who he loved? You know who else he did that to? He did it to Saul. He did that with Saul. You ain't never hear David say nothing bad about Saul. No matter how many times this man 